Hi, I'm Randall. I'm a first time boat owner with 10,000 miles of open ocean sailing experience. I love classic boats and as a new owner, I'm more curious than ever about what goes into buying, fixing, improving, operating, and safely enjoying their magic and beauty. Join me as I talk to experts and share insights on all things related to older sailboats. If you're interested in affordable ways to get out sailing, you are in the right place. Today, I'm tagging along with Jim, a veteran surveyor, to chat about DIY tips on an old sailboat and what you can look for before you hire a surveyor. Last episode, we covered the running gear, the prop shaft, the propeller, the cutlass bearing, the stuffing box, and zincs. This week, we're moving on to keels, rudders, through hulls, and a few other bits and pieces from the bottom of the boat. We're going to pick it back up with Jim. Just happened to be shooting in an area where there's a high performance sailboat with a very large rudder that has a stainless steel stock that's failing internally. And when that happens, it's because there's water in the rudder blade. And when it freezes up, it actually expands inside the rudder blade and will fracture the skin of the rudder. And then that moisture and that water will start to bleed out. And it bleeds out looking rust colored because the stainless steel, unless it's got an oxide coating, it will become oxygen starved and turn to regular steel and rust. So come with me, I'll show you a rudder that looks like that. Oh, cool. And if you see this kind of stain on a rudder on a boat that you may consider buying, you want to have to look at the rudder a little more closely. So here's one of these telltale signs. There's obviously water in the rudder, the stainless steel tang coming off of the rudder stock may be corroding right here at the weld at the bottom of the rudder stock. It may be coming from one of the tanks up here and finding its way out down here. But the bottom line is that the rudder is structurally sacrificed and will need repair of some kind. One of the things that you can tell about a rudder when you see a boat, and it may not necessarily have this problem, yeah. would be to kind of even just very simply with your hand, check the cord angle. In other words, the angle of the radius of the rudder here as yeah. it comes aft. And where there's humps and hollows, that essentially is telling you that the rudder has a problem internally, which is causing the skin on the rudder to distend somehow. So what you're saying is you want to give the rudder a really proper hug. <laughs> yeah, I love that rudder. <laughs> Give that rudder some love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's just take a stroll in this direction. Yeah, let's do it. One of the things a surveyor will do with a rudder is hit it with a hammer. That's what I was doing when okay. we first started yeah, to yeah. talk to each other. And the rudder skin should sound pretty consistent. Yep. And as we see a few more rudders, eventually you're going to hear one that has bad core. Okay. This one is good. If the core is compromised, it, what kind of sound? That's actually not too good there. Yeah. That's, that's where the skin is separated from the core. It's a little hard to determine that yeah. from that, but but this is the kind of difference in sound that surveyor would be able to show you. Um, let's see, I'm sure our moisture readings are going to be high. Most people don't have moisture meters, so you're not going to be doing this walking through a boat yard. But there, that'll give you an angle yeah. on it that can tell you there's water in there. And 200 is kind of a warning level? Yeah, you can see the red light is a good indicator. <laughs> and it, That should you, be a dollar sign, shouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, that should be a dollar sign. Um, let's go look at some other things. Yeah. This is not a good sign. <laughs> this is if you come you know. up to the boat and the rudder fell out. <laughs> so this is a pretty good look. Uh, so this is my rudder stock, stainless steel. Uh, goes down in and then this is all glass and over some kind of subframe. Yeah, right. Okay. A, a, pretty good, a pretty good understanding how it's put together. Oh yeah, we got a little weeping. Yeah, same thing we see. You see this consistently. It's not always the end of the world and God knows they go sailing for years before they go bad. Oh. Yep, see? And in the water, of course, where's water going to go? Yep. Where gravity takes it. <laughs> so it's pretty wet down here. This one feels pretty clean. A little bit of a dimple here. Oh, oh, good. There we go. Hear that? You hear that difference? Yeah. 
everything is hollow and has a little echo. Yep. That sounds kind of dull. That skin to core separation. Okay. And that means there's water in here. And if you look, you can even see some crazing in the, yep. what looks like the bottom paint itself. That may very well be the gel coat. Ah. So, and that's because it's expanding and kind of bulging? Oh. Yep. Yep. Ooh. Let's see. Get the money money meter out? Yeah. The yeah. Meter. Let's see. All right. Well, all right. Give me a guess. What I'm going to guess that's a, that sounds like a 210. 210? All right. Yeah. Let's see. All right. Let's turn it on. Two ten. Okay. All right, here we go. That's dry, right? Pretty yeah. dry, yeah. right? Oh. Let's get like right there. And let's move down. It's getting wetter. Oh wow. Getting wetter. Oh my god. Getting wetter. There we go. That's wet. So if you're the buyer, what do you say to the the seller? You say, I want to buy this boat, but. Your rudder needs to be redone. I mean, you'll probably say, hire your surveyor yeah, if you're yeah. concerned. Surveyors, they, you know, they're they're disinterested. Yeah, objective. They're objective. Yeah. They just want to make sure the boat's okay, and if it's not okay, they want to let you know. And What's get the best surveyor you can afford. You know, right. some of us are pretty expensive, yeah. but we tend to know what we're doing. If yeah. we were a little more expensive, we were a little more experienced and thorough. That's right. I just liken it to a home inspection. You know, it's very similar. You, you don't want to buy a home without getting inspected and having an expert really tell you, hey, listen, your roof is leaking, or hey, your tow rail is leaking. Same kind of thing, right? Exactly. So, uh, anyway. Exactly, except your home doesn't sink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of curious to move on to keels ah. and get your thoughts on different keels and what you look for and what do you watch out for? <clears throat> yeah, that's a, that's a good topic. And you know the nice thing about keels right now is that they're all aground, <laughs> which is not a nice thing generally. <laughs> a lot easy, a lot right now, you know, yeah, let's go look at some of the different keel configurations. Okay. Uh, Iron keel. When keels weep, they can actually fail. I'm trying to knock the fairing compound off of it, which is, doesn't want to come off. But you can see the trailing edge of the keel here, because it's iron, has actually started to fail. What you will see on iron keels often is that the bottom of the keel has rusting going on because of grounding or sitting in the mud. You don't always see this failure kind of here, but that'll tell you that the interface between the hull and the ballast keel is going bad too. So as that iron oxide forms, it forces the keel, the ballast keel, away from the hull. And that lets water in. The other issue with iron keels, and an iron keel does not absorb impact. A lead keel, it's soft. It'll mush when you hit that rock or whatever. An iron keel won't. That iron keel is going to send that impact up and into the hull, so you'll find damage internally on the transverse floors. Any buyer can, can determine that there was a serious grounding by pulling up the floorboards at the aft end of the keel or at the forward end of the keel, wherever you find it. And if there's detabbing in those transverse floors or damage to the interior joinery around the keel sump, she could have had a serious grounding. It looks to me like it was coated with some kind of a primer and a fairing compound and then copper bottom paint. And that's beginning to, to come away. The keel itself could be a lead wing, which is what this looks like, yep. bolted to an iron base okay. here that's through bolted into the hull. <clears throat> um, there's dissimilar metals. Yep. The bolts are probably stainless steel. So you can see the rusting back here. That's probably from the iron section of the keel. Okay. Uh, this is a little unusual yeah. because of all these different metals involved. Yep. Uh, not knowing the boat and what's going on, I would assume that the keel may have taken a couple of bangs, and that's what disturbed this, because you can see it's not just bleeding. It's actually fairing compound that's been blown away. Yep. So the bottom of the keel feels like it could have taken a, 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 a little bit of an impact. Maybe the leading edge over here looks good. Okay. Maybe just a little bit of... Is that where you start, Is kind of thinking about whether it has impact or not? Yeah. It's a pretty common thing for the a keel on a sailboat to have had groundings of various types. Yep. Some of them serious, some of them not serious, some of them just sitting in the mud. 
but all of them stress the hull yeah. when that occurs because the water's moving around the keel usually. If you're sitting still for a while and the keel's on the ground and the boat's moving around like this, it's going to stress that hull to keel union. Yeah. So that's a, absolutely an important thing to look at. Now, if you were looking at this boat and doing a deep survey, do you say this is a problem or do you think like well that's just something that you grind down and then fare over and then recode every few years yeah there's there are some critical factors that are rare um, but generally a little bit of that kind of thing is not unusual okay it's a it's a function of how many keel bolts the width of the keel the strength of the structure all these things but in a lighter boat a little bit of movement like that with the catalina smile yeah. is not going to be an issue unless there was an impact of some kind that did damage internally and now all that movement you see outside yep. is not just that little bit of movement. Yeah. There's actually broken floors. Yeah. There's actually detabbed sections of stuff inside. Okay. So um, a, a boat where you see that little crack can have issues that are larger than just th yeah. that little crack. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an indicator. This kind of separation and opening here in this particular boat may be because of factors that we can't see without peeling away the fairing compound. Yep. But on a boat that has a wing keel, a lot of the weight of the boat is placed down here in the wing. That yep. gives it a higher moment. Yep. Yeah. So that's a good thing from the point of view of the boat's sailing abilities and ability to go to weather. But when you get a wing keel stuck in the mud mm. <clears throat> or a wing keel that goes aground, that's a lot of surface area distributing load yep. into the rest of the structure. Yep. So they, we could have had a grounding of that nature yep. that's caused this disturbance. But without cutting back the fairing, it's almost impossible yeah. to tell. If you own this boat, would that be one of the first things you do is to grind that down to see I what you're I would cut it back with? to see what's going on. Yep. Or be inside the boat and know yep. what's going on there. And, and that, that's a perfect example of where to bring in a seasoned surveyor to really do the deep dive. And, and maybe as a layperson, I can say, okay, that's on my checklist of, of things to really dig into. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. But not a deal breaker necessarily. Not necessarily, no. Yeah. Okay. Ferret, go sailing. Let's go find another keel to bang on or something. <laughs> this Cape Dory behind you is... Uh Look at that, how beautiful. All right, full keel. Internal ballast. No hold the keel separation there, right? No. When they put the runner on, when they put a heel shinning on it, they've got to drill through the keel sump. See, Cape Dory has her ballast up forward, yep. and then it drops off, and there's actually a sump here. And then the laminate is bulked up pretty well. What do you think that's a sign of? Is that a sign of... Uh that? Touching ground there, that delamination or that? Well, I think this, as most of this is because water has gotten out the heel fitting, which is bolted on here. It's underneath the fairing compound. Okay, so that's just a, a mount for Yeah, that? and the moisture is finding its way out through that heel fitting. It might not be finding its way out from inside the hull because there's a sump pack here, right? It could be. Yeah. But uh, sometimes it's just the, the bolt holes that go through the laminate and allowing moisture out. Okay. All right, so what we have is an internally ballasted keel. And this is fiberglass as a part of the hull. But the internal portion of the ballast is sitting in a slurry of resin and other materials and sometimes becomes detached okay. from the external skin. And when that happens, water can get in and you can have very similar problems to a rudder that has yeah. a core failing from moisture ingress into the core. Yeah. And on a ballast keel that's set up in this way, when you take an impact, which is what it looks like we have repaired and, and, yeah. and primed over here, once again, we have what? A six foot hydrostatic head? Yep. So six feet deep in the water, that water is forcing its way into this keel sump. Yep. And eventually, over time, causing degradation of the materials that they use for ballast internally. Right. And so you're going to get separation. So you know how bad that one rudder sounded, right? Yep. All right, well, we have something like that here. Internal ballast separated from external skin. Pretty good. Yep. 
Here, get a little bit light. Yeah, a little hollow there. Very yeah. hollow. Yeah. So, is there moisture? I don't know. We've got lead or iron between a, here and a, inside. It'll probably skew the moisture meter, but the skin says dry. So, yeah, we got a little bit of hollow in there. I'm moving to the but there's no huge amounts of moisture between the internal ballast and the skin. How about um, through hulls? This is a bronze through hull. And one of the reasons we know it's bronze is, can you see this little green here? That tiny little yeah, bit little, of green little right in there? Well, the bronze is made of brass and copper. The copper in there can oxidize a little bit from straight current corrosion or just from immersion in seawater if the casting itself is not very noble. Okay. But you'll see this little bit of green. Yep. And that's actually copper that's, that's oxidizing with it. Sometimes the interaction between the bottom pane itself and the through hull can cause that. Okay. This particular through hull has a stainless steel ball that rotates and a nylon cup that is the valve of the through hull. So is that a ball valve then? It's or? a ball valve. Okay. Yep. And the body of the through hull is bronze. Yep. And the valve itself is stainless. Okay. And when you look at these close up, you can see if there's corrosion up inside, if there's green up inside, yeah. if the, the ball is got a bunch of calcium like on it yeah. that will seize it so that you can't close it. Do you always try to operate them to see if they're functioning? Well, or? when you get into the boat, you definitely do. Yeah, yeah. We found a boat that has a through hull that has a ball in it that is scored from being opened and closed. And if you look... And what, what do you mean by score? You can see the surface of the ball valve inside. It's closed now. And then there's some corrosion in the body of the through hull itself which is not the prime concern right now, but that, that ball valve is gonna be difficult to open and close. Is that one you would look at and say, do you think about replacing that? Yeah, definitely. Inside, it probably looks just as bad yeah. around where it's installed. Yeah. So yeah, it would be telltale on the inside. If you have questions you'd like to ask Jim, feel free to drop a comment down below the video or shoot us an email to askjim at yachthunting.com. And if you're serious about needing a survey, feel free to reach out to Jim at Accredited Marine Surveyors. His information is listed here. And I'll also put the information below the video. And of course, thanks again to our Patreon sponsors for all of your support. Without your help, this production really wouldn't be possible. So really appreciate it. Thanks so much.